Welcome back, Defenders! Tomorrow we'll be back to regular update videos, but today I have a special video from friend of the channel, Macer Gifford. If you don't know Macer Gifford, you can follow him on Twitter, but he's a British volunteer in the Ukrainian military. He's been risking his life fighting on the front lines for over a year now. About six months ago, we filmed a podcast together. I'll link it down below if you want to check it out. But here's what he has to say for the channel. Hi guys, I thought I'd do an exclusive video for the Jake Bro YouTube channel. Um, I can't tell you where I am. I'm a little bit sweaty, I've been working hard today. It's been a bit hectic of late. Um, if anyone's been following my Twitter channel, uh, or my, uh, my Twitter, um, you would have seen that Vidmark has created several new different projects. One being the drone team, which has been enormously successful. We've struck everything from groups of soldiers, boats on the river, uh, tanks, APCs, uh, armored personnel carriers, um, even bunkers as well. Um, we worked alongside the 9th, which is the uh, Special Forces uh, rec um, Regiment. Uh, it's a Ukrainian uh, unit, absolutely fantastic battalion. Uh, worked alongside the 73rd, I mean, we've been working with a lot of different partners, both in the South and in other places as well. Um, I just want to do a quick update for uh, Jake, because um, uh, obviously uh, many of you have been following me on Twitter. Um, I've done an interview with Jake uh, about six months ago now, um, and I just wanted to give you an update, I suppose, from the front line, from the perspective of a British volunteer uh, or international volunteer in the uh, Ukrainian military. Um, as you may know, the main thrust of the offensive is in and around Zaporizhia in the south. There's also another thrust coming from the direction of Bakhmut, which is doing uh, great things. Um, there are other parts of the front line that are incredibly active. Um, obviously, I'm most well known uh, for operating primarily in the south. Uh, my battalion, my unit as well, which is Vidmark, took part in the liberation of Hassan uh, just before Christmas. Um, so sort of, when was it? November 2022. Um, and then we fought on what I like to call the river war, the sort of secret river war in the south. While everyone was looking at Bakhmut and other places, they didn't realize that there was quite a nasty, vicious fight going on for the islands and inlets of the Dnipro in the south. Um, I don't think it's a massive secret that I'm not exactly in that AO anymore. Um, but we've been working hard in the south. We've also worked hard in other places. There's been numerous other places that we've worked. Uh, and I want to draw your attention to something that you may have heard of recently. So in the north, just north of Bakhmut, um, there's a place called Le Mans, um, where in and around a, a little town called Makivka, or I think it's called, uh, you'll have to, I'm sure Jake will correct me on this one. There's been uh, a lot of activity in that area. Um, the 25th Combined Arms Army of the Russian Army has been pushing quite aggressively just in the last um, sort of three days, four days. Dozens of Russian tanks have been taken out. Um, it's been an extraordinarily hard fight uh, in the north as well because the Russians are quite determined, it seems, to distract from the south. They want the Ukrainians to take assets away from Zaporizhia, away from Bakhmut and up to the north. So it's a very important fight that the guys up there uh, resist the 25th Arms, uh, Combined Arms uh, Army and they do a good job uh, in the north because if they don't then um, the, the Ukrainian offensive could get flanked essentially. So keep your eye on that front. Uh, it's, it's very interesting. It's a fluid uh, thing. There's a lot going on up there, but uh, keep your eye there. Obviously, the, the war in the south continues, and I think our main, well, at the end of the day, I think our main focus, all our eyes, need to be on Zaporizhia and Bakhmut. Um, I'm incredibly hopeful um, that there will be progress in the near future. Um, a lot of people have complained about how slow things are going, but I have to say, um, the intensity of the fighting, the amount of minefields uh, that we've encountered have been absolutely appalling. There is a lot of drones, uh, Russian drones in the sky. There's a lot of mines and uh, moving around is incredibly, incredibly difficult. Um, uh, it's just appalling. And I've just, as I said, I've just got to be very careful with what, with what I say. But um, as you can imagine, it's uh, it's not easy at the moment. So... Uh, 
What I'm trying to say is cut, the, cut some slack for the uh, Ukrainian military at the moment because um, uh, they are pushing hard, they are making progress, they are degrading the Russian forces, which is very important. It's more important than anything else that we take out their assets, uh, their um, ammo dumps, and, their, um, and we find out where their reinforcements are coming from because when we do make a breakthrough, um, if we deplete their assets uh, enough and we throw our reserves in, then uh, we're basically kicking the door down of the Russian army and then we can exploit and uh, make better progress. So when the collapse comes, it's going to come fast. But for now, it's going a bit slow. That's the uh, main message I've got for all of you. But anyway, um, from the front lines in Ukraine, I thought I'd sign off. Um, Thanks, Jake, for supporting international volunteers in Ukraine. Thank you all uh, for following uh, the cause and the war so closely. Uh, keep faith uh, and uh, like, and, like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Catch you later, guys. If you would like to support Macer, you can do so directly from his Buy Me a Coffee page. His preferred charity of choice is Come Back Alive. I'll link them down below if you want to consider a donation. Thank you to everyone, and I'll see you tomorrow.